You got to have something. Welcome back to the show for caregivers about caregivers hosted by a caregiver. This is Peter Rosenberg. This is Hope for the Caregiver, 800-688-9522, 800-688-9522. We're going to uh, get to the phone calls in just a minute, but I have a very special guest on the phone, uh, Chaplain Henry Davidson. Chaplain, you with us? Hi, I'm here, Peter. Thank you. Oh, listen, one of my absolute favorite people in the whole world. He is the chaplain over at Metro Davidson Correctional Facility. Uh, Metro Davidson County Correctional Facility in Nashville, Tennessee. You've been chaplain over there for what, 12 years? I've been over there for 12 years right now. And he is a, a minister. You know, I got to tell you something, chaplain. Being a minister is hard enough, but being a chaplain in a correctional facility, that brings a whole different dynamic, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, it does, Peter. But uh, I look at it, you know, I'm in a position where God wants me to be, and uh, uh, not on that, but the inmates are in need of a chaplain and a preacher there. So I just go wherever God uh, sends me. But you also serve as the first responder chaplain too, with the uh, the police department. And sure, I do. I do. My wife and I, we've been uh, working with Metro Police Department for about 13 years now. Uh, and we do, uh, we are the chaplain that is called out when there's a death. And, of course, we go out and we comfort the uh, the people out there in the community. We work with the police department. We work with the officers. And uh, we just enjoy everything we do. We just thank God each day for it. Well, you, the reason I'm having you on is because uh, Standing With Hope is the presenting sponsor of this show. And we have two program areas, the Family Caregiver Outreach and then a Prosthetic Limb Outreach, which we've had now for, gosh, when did we start that? About seven years ago. It's been, and, it's been about right at, right at seven years. That's correct. Well, we, we launched it over there at the prison, and we collect used prosthetic limbs from all over the country, and they go to this particular prison where Chaplain Davidson serves, and he is um, he is kind of overseeing all this right now. Um, and has been, uh, they, they're, you, you guys got somebody new coming in or have you hired somebody? Cause you had one guy got promoted and so that you're going to fill that spot, but you're kind of stepping in, aren't you? We hired someone and, uh, we're very thankful uh, for that. Uh, we hired someone as of Friday and, uh, they would get started in training, uh, on this coming Monday. So we are very excited about that. Well, in addition to all the other things you do, <laughs> you were helping with that program as well, but. It's an unusual program, the only one in the world where inmates work to recycle prosthetic limbs, and um, it's one of the many faith-based programs that Core Civic has uh, in these uh, facilities that they manage around the country. Uh, I think there there are eighty something correctional facilities that Core Civic either owns or manages, uh, and uh, faith-based programs are a big part of that journey. Before we get into some more stuff, tell me a little bit about faith-based programs in a correctional facility, particularly the one you're in, why that's so important and what it, what it accomplishes? Well, well, Peter, you know, we, we believe uh, faith-based does a lot of things. The reinterest does a lot of things uh, for those inmates and offenders out there. And we just feel that if you want to get a, a fresh start, a new start, you're going to have to really learn different ways of doing things. And, and really through our faith-based program, uh, we're teaching them the same thing. The mother and grandmother taught them. Uh, now they're able to understand because they're, you know, the older age and everything. But uh, uh, those guys, uh, they're looking for something different. And I always tell them, you know, if you tried everything else and, and really has gotten you here, so why don't we just try something different? Let's try a faith base. So, you know, uh, in Wheels for the World, of course, what your program is, Standing with Hope. Uh, those guys, you know, they, they feel like they're doing something. And when they feel like they're giving back to society and changing their minds and, and hearts and they see that they can do things different, then they want to become a part of it. Uh, and that's the part I like to see. I like to see the change in people. It's not about me, but it's really about the one who sent me and, and the change that people are having within themselves. Well, the Wheels for the World program you mentioned, that's Johnny Erickson Tata's program of wheelchairs. They refurbish donated wheelchairs, and in the same shop, we disassemble and recycle the parts from prosthetic limbs. So you got Johnny and Gracie both uh, have programs in that area. And I, I remember one time I knew that this we had resonated something with the inmates because I had uh, one of the inmates came up to me, and when I was visiting, he said, I never thought about people with disabilities. 
until I started working in this program. And well, well I'll that, tell you, I'll tell you that's a thing. powerful statement, isn't it? It is a very powerful statement. Uh, I, I just enjoy what I see. I, I enjoy what I see in Johnny. I met Grace's uh, uh, several times. We sat down and talked, laughed, and broke bread together. And, and to see the joy and happiness on her face, I mean, who wouldn't want to be a part of uh, Standing with Hope? And, and the inmates feel the same way. I mean, when they met her, I mean, they looked at their situation, they looked at her, and they like, well, you know, mine's not nothing. And just to be a part of what I see right now, uh, with, even with her appearance and the thing that she does and you does in the community, it, it makes the inmates want to become a part of it. Um, I, I even heard one at one point that uh, you received letters from the inmates and, uh, you know, they oh. just thank you for coming out, and, and they just want to be a part of, of, of your program, Standing with Hope. So I, I went over there. I'm always dropping legs off at the prison, which is a little <laughs> weird. Um, there's all you can always uh, tell when Standing with Hope is having a big week because there's a bunch of used prosthetic limbs waiting to go through screening at the front of the prison there. But well, I walked in one time and and you you put me through the training so I could actually walk in unescorted. I have a badge and everything else, but you put me through the training. I went, I went back there and I watched. I talked to one of the guys. The first thing he said to me was, "You know, please tell Gracie we're praying for." Her. You know, and, and these inmates, when they say they're praying, they're serious about it. They, they are. They, and, they are. And what does this mean to inmates for recidivism? I mean, if they go through programs like this, these the, and y'all have various programs, Men of Valor, you have Johnny and Friends with Wheels for the World, you have Standing with Hope. But when they go through these kind of programs, what does it mean for these people, whether they're coming back or not? Well, well it, it means a lot to them, uh, Really, it shows them that, uh, you know, that they are wanted, uh, someone care about them. Not only they are wanted and someone care, but they are needed also in the community. And once the inmates find out that they are needed in the community and they are loved, and that's what our program does at the prison. Uh, I mean, we care about the inmates. We care about them transitioning back into uh, the society. And uh, it just means a whole lot to them uh, that they are not alone and people have not forgotten them. That's the main thing, that you can come into our prison, into this system, and and say you need our help, and we open up and we do what we can do. Uh, That that just makes a big difference to them. And and, and they are proud of it. They're proud of it. We have a request for them, people waiting to get in wheels of the world, standing with hope. Oh, I want to do this chapter. I want to be able to give back. To the third world, I want to be able to not just give back here, but I want to give back all over the world, and, and they are blessed to uh, be able to do that. Well, I I I know at least several of them that I've talked to never even heard of the country of Ghana, for example, and here they are actively helping amputees over in a country some of them never even heard of till they started working on this program. And they're helping them walk by recycling these parts, helping us strip down. And it's it's a little bit involved. It's not hugely technical, but you have to disassemble the prosthesis and inventory all the parts with it and so forth. And it's incredibly important. What does this mean to recidivism for to be involved in these programs? Well, the, the recidivism, uh, there's a decrease in it. Uh, no doubt about it. They find that there's something they can do. And, uh, and, and again, as I said earlier, they, they – want to be a part of the program uh, by the way by the way for those in mcduncan recidivism means is if they get rearrested they get arrested and have to come back and the goal for correctional facilities is to have a a recidivism rate that is just you know the, the lower it gets the better because we don't want them to have to come back into the prison system we want to help them get transitioned back into a better life and so uh, you know go ahead continue on that sorry to interrupt yeah, that, that- important to uh, on the recidivism rate because if we can reduce that rate uh community and volunteers and all can come together and, and and do what they need to do in order to reduce that that make our community a better place to live and that's what core civic that's what all these partners are all about it, it, it's not about just getting them in there and, and making an income uh forget about that uh we are in there to help them transition back into society so that our society are better. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just proud that God sent me to be a part of this organization. And, uh, and, and for you and Gracie, oh, man, I, I, don't, I don't know how you do it. You're a blessed man. You're a called man of God. And I'm not just saying that I know what I see, that I know what I feel. Uh, 
for the things that you do. You, you, you work hard. You're always on the run. And you're right. You drop legs off. I get phone calls. Chap, you got some legs up here. You know, that's all right. I'm going to come and pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's all about, you know. And, and uh, like you showed me, I put them on the computer and everything. And I think that what we received then goes direct to you. And then we'll start working on tearing them apart and everything and, and prepare to ship them away for someone who, you know, really needs you. Well, listen, you care for a lot of people. You care for inmates. You care for cops that are out there in the field. You, you're on the scene with, with accidents, with family members. You and your wife both are doing this. Now, you do something. One of the things we talk about in this show, this is hope for the caregiver. We want caregivers to be able to take care of themselves. You do something very special every Friday night. Now, tell us what that is. <laughs> well, Friday night for two hours, uh, after giving all my time, through the week uh, to God and to other people, I turn around about two hours, I go bowling. I, I enjoy bowling. That's the way that I can just relax. My wife and I, we get out there and we relax, have fun for two hours, and after that two hours is over, it's time to go back to work. Well, now, who's better, you or your wife? <laughs> well, now, you know I'm not going to say <laughs> uh, I am better, but we, we bowl good. How about that? <laughs> you bowl <laughs> Now, y'all are serious about bowling, right, aren't we, you? We are serious about bowling. Um, my you wife visited. Been out bowling, though, for, for about a little bit over a year. She had both knee replacements. And uh, so she's been out for a while. She hasn't been able to bowl, but she's right there with me, though. And, uh, well, I'm glad because, yeah, I knew you were serious about it because you visit the tomb of the unknown bowler, I think. I mean, you're, you're real serious. <laughs> well, listen, Chaplain, this means so much that you have taken the time to call on this and do this. And uh, I really do appreciate this and the work you do. You bring an enthusiasm, a passion. Uh, I want to make sure that you're well taken care of. Do you sure you don't need a third hour on Friday night for bowling? <laughs> no, sir, not until it comes. If God give me a third hour, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> but but right now, Peter, I want, I want to say this here, um, and, and uh, this is definitely truth here that I, that I see. Uh, a lot of people out there at the court civic, you know, they see you come in, the inmates and everything, but they are glad to be a part of uh, Standing with Hope. But I just thank God for you because the thing that you do and the things you do for your wife as far as taking care of her, I hope a lot of men who listen to this show because you are a great man of God. You're a great husband. You take care of Gracie. Uh and not only that, but you take care of other people, third world countries, and you you wait to, you know you spend a lot of your time uh, trying to you know enable other people to walk and to be happy and everything. And I can imagine, you know, when a person get over there, uh, they're picking up something for the leg or the on the knee or anything, and then all of a sudden, you know, they are able to walk and get around. So we just thank you for it. I don't know how much you know what people have said. But uh, I'm telling you right now, personal coming from me and Court Civic and, and all of us, uh, the even the inmates, we love you, my wife. We love you. We love you and Gracie. And, and one day we'll, we'll get you all over for dinner when I can get you to slow up. <laughs> well, I will be honored, and you've honored me today with this. And thank you for loving on inmates. You know, that's close to the heart of our Savior. Um, he said, uh, you know, to, when I was in prison, you visited me, sick, naked, hungry, in prison. That's what he said, and and you do that. You and your wife model that. And um, if folks want to get involved, go to corecivic dot com because there are a lot of employers out there who may be interested in hiring workers that are wanting to get a second chance. You know, go out to corecivic dot com, give them a call, and say as an employer, look, I've got some 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 jobs that I could use uh, some employees with that, that, and I'm willing to take a chance on them. Because they, these programs are good. Real quick, Chaplain. Then we got to go. But um, you said you've been there twelve years, and of all the you'd graduate about twenty, twenty, twenty five people a year, right, through these programs. I uh, yes, I average about twenty five a year. I graduate, uh, and that's not uh, counting your program, Standing with Hope. Uh, we probably average uh, anywhere a year. We probably get anywhere maybe. 10 guys a year that stays there for a year or two years in your program. Uh, so All right, so you're looking, that goes through. you're looking at over 300 inmates since you've been there. Uh, well over that, almost 400 inmates that you've been there, been through these kinds of programs. 
How many have come back incarcerated? Well, that, that's a good question. I'll tell you, I was looking at that, uh, Peter, the, the other day. I was just sitting here thinking about it, and, and I would say that the 12 years I've been there, I probably can count them on both hands, uh, maybe. Uh, I don't even think we had double numbers. I, I don't even that, think That's astonishing. That's, that's an impressive number that you've had that many people go through it, and that few come back. So that right. means that you guys, you guys are getting it done right. Listen, I got to go to a break, and uh, thank you, Chaplain Davidson. Thank you, and uh, we'll put this out on the website for folks to listen to as well. So, thank you so much for calling in. Okay. I'm Gracie Rosenberger. After losing both of my legs, I have a clear understanding of the importance of prosthetic limbs. That's why I founded Standing with Hope, a prosthetic limb ministry helping workers in Ghana provide limbs for their own people, all to point others to Christ. We provide training equipment and even recycled components from used limbs. I invite you to visit StandingWithHope.com today so you can participate. That's StandingWithHope.com. 